In this video, I'm going to help you answer the question relevant to the general self-efficacy scale, where you have the opportunity to respond to the 10 questions in the questionnaire, and then calculate your score, and then compare it against uh, some norms to help evaluate where along the scale uh, you lie. Now, this is up to you to participate in the way that you see fit. You can generate a number that is anywhere between 10 and 40. Uh, by not answering the questions honestly, or you can uh, go through it seriously and answer each question in the scale and simply sum each response. So you get a one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Do that for all 10 items, and you can score anywhere from as low as 10 to as high as 40. So to get the questionnaire, you got to click on the link. Uh, it might ask you if, you're, if you feel confident about this because it might have a virus. It doesn't have a virus to my knowledge. Uh, I don't have one on my computer. So when a, a person scores the questionnaire ultimately with, the, with a sum of some sort, let's just say they scored moderately true for all the items and they got a score of 40. Well, in that case, to calculate the standard deviation, I should say the Z score associated with such a value with reference to the benchmarks published by Scholl et al. 2005, you would take the value of 40 based on the Z-score formula. You take the raw score, you subtract the mean, which is 29.55 equals 10.45, and then you divide the standard deviation, 5.32, and you get a, a Z-score of 1.964. So this is a positive z-score. It's, it's larger than zero, which implies that somebody who scored 40 uh, is scoring at a percentile such that less uh, or as many as 50% and a lot more than 50%, as we'll find out, scored lower than 40. So let's see what exactly it corresponds to to answer. So to the first question, convert your raw score to a z-score. Well, it depends on what you actually scored. If you scored 40 you got a, a score of 1.96. Let's just say you scored, a person scored 21. So 21 minus 29.55 is negative 8.55. And then you divide that by the standard deviation, 5.32, and I got a negative 1.607. So that's how you could calculate your z-score in order to standardize it in such a way that you can interpret where a score lies, if it's your own score or someone else's score, in relation to the benchmarks. So to get a more precise percentile rank score, you could use the z-score distribution to get that. And so let's do that. That's actually making use of that section of the textbook that showed the norm distribution Excel function equals norm distribution, Z value, so whatever Z value you got, and then 0 and 1 for the standard deviation and the mean equals true. So in this case, let's make reference to the Z distribution to calculate that. So I'm going to type in equals norm distribution, and the first Z score I calculated was 1.96, and the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. Now, the mean in the normative benchmarks was 29.55, or whatever it was, but I'm dealing with uh, a normal, uh, a Z score distribution now, because I converted my raw score of 40 to, or whoever score raw score of 40, to a Z score, which is 1.96. So I need to use 0 and 1 as the mean and standard deviation. And now I write true uh, to use the cumulative portion of the function. And what I get is 0.975, uh, which means that 97.5% of the population scores equal to or lower than 40 on this scale. And uh, that's a significant portion. So most people do not score as high as 40. In fact, we know that most people score 29.55 or lower. 
So let's look at the Z score that was negative, a negative one where it was 21. Let's say someone scored 21 on this 10 item scale, 21 minus 29.55 equals negative 8.55 divided by 5.32 equals negative 0 0.60. Now I just have to change, I can only use positive values here. So 1.60 is 94.5, so now I need to subtract 1 from that. 1 minus 0.9452 is equal to 5.48, so only about 5.5% of people score as low as 21 on this scale. So it basically means that they're saying hardly true to every single item, so somewhere in this ballpark. So the mean is somewhere right in the middle here, 2.9, people who score more in the two, consistently in the twos, in uh, getting a score of 21 is not a very large percentage of people, according to the uh, normal distribution. So that is how I answered that question. I hope you learned a little bit about calculating a z-score and then making reference to the z-distribution for positive scores and for negative scores. And as I mentioned, for ne negative scores, this norm distribution function doesn't accept negative values, so you kind of have to uh, subtract whatever the proportion is that you get here in the uh, cell.